Welcome to the Qualify Gamer Guys podcast. I'm your host, Steve. I'm sick. I'm sure you can tell my voice sounds terrible. That was a uh, which means always, a. Yeah, I don't know. With me as always is Neil. Uh, I don't know why he keeps coming back. No one invites him, but I just like I'm on Skype and he calls me. So I'm like, hey, let's do a podcast. Uh, this is episode 23 of the Qualify Gamer Guys podcast. Uh, the summer drought is real. Oh, yeah. It has begun. Um, so anyway, a little while ago, and that means 17 years ago, uh, there wasn't a summer drought because Banjo-Kazooie came out on June 30th, 1998. Uh, I never played this, Neil. <laughs> I was about to say, your favorite game. So Banjo-Kazooie yeah, I some- I, is, I think, what made Rare famous. Which now they're coming out. Yeah. Which I mean, like, there's the rare collection, and then uh, Ukulele is coming out, which I think that's the greatest yeah. um, name. As a lover of puns as we are, that name is incredible. Um, or just wordplay in general. But so Banjo Kazooie was a game that was insanely hard, like most old school games. And it was one of those games that was like, it was an open world, but the levels were so big. That's kind of what you could get back then. Like, this is compared to, like, you know, Super Mario, which you'd go into one level and, like, those were pretty big, but then they were small. I know that made no sense when I just said that. But Pedro Kazoo, it was about exploration, I guess. It wasn't just physical size. It was just you have to do all these things to unlock secret passages and they would lead into other zones. And you had to do all this. But the problem is it was, like, the most collective game in this in the literal sense that you were just collecting things and that so what you're telling me is size matters size absolutely matters yeah thanks <laughs> i thought so go on and so banjo kazooie as everyone i'm sure knows became famous for that and then it's also it had this charm to it where it's really funny like all the characters just would crack jokes and stupid jokes. But Kazooie, who is the bird in the backpack, was literally just an ass was just an asshole. Like complete asshole. And sounds familiar. And she would be like, she's likes Banjo and that's fine or whatever, but like anyone else she'd just like tear apart. And it was hilarious. Mm -hmm. Because she was just like wisecracking the bad guys and whatnot. But this game man, this I think this game was the first game to like Make me feel too nervous and nerve wracking to play it, because this is mm. one. This is one level where like you had to swim underwater, and you had to like swim through these rings and into like this like maze thing, and like just the thought of like running out of breath like it freaked me out when I was a little kid. <laughs> the water levels, uh, I know, are actually like a common uh, um, fear. Like people like that, like in Mario sixty four, like when you see his breath meter going down, that scared a lot of kids. Not me, because I'm not, you know, you, dumb. Yeah. But. How scared were you of the swimming in Assassin's Creed four? Um. Yeah, yeah, because it's open sea, which is one of my biggest fears. <laughs> which open sea shark. is terrifying. The open sea is. Beyond terrifying, Neil. Beyond, yeah, it absolutely is, and 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 I mean that it was like a little insane in Assassin's Creed Four when you like these great white sharks are hunting you and you like you hide in grass and they just swim by you and stuff. But that was another game that like you're right because you like you see your breath meter getting down and you have to, like I have to get to this other like air pocket or whatever. Mm-hmm. All right, consider it like, ah, oh, dude, I love Assassin's Creed Four. I know you were like whatever about it. But thinking about was. underwater gameplay and how that was just a complete side, like irrelevant to everything else. And then like the hunting of the whales and stuff. That was a great game. But Banjo-Kazooie, a game that I never beat, a game that my older brother beat long after, like only like two years ago we finally beat it. Because he just sat down with a guide and was like, he just put so many hours into it. Mm-hmm. And then they made Banjo Tooie, which the coolest thing. This is actually isn't the coolest thing, but because I I kind of hate these things, but I, you'll see. So in Banjo Kazooie, if you did something, 
it, and then saved your progress to Banjo Tui, it would then unlock something. So like, if you didn't play the first one, it's like you were just screwed. You just couldn't do it. Yeah. And but it wasn't it wasn't story related. It was side quest related. And so like it was kind of to get people to play the old game. And but a lot of people didn't because they didn't know about it until after it like came out and they're like, oh, I'm just gonna get Banjo Tui. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people I remember were upset about that. But it, but it was worth it because it turns Kazooie the bird into a dragon and just breathes fire instead. Oh. So it was like this major change. Really? So it was like, but it was such a hassle. I remember someone like just writing about how terrible it was to do that, like to get to this point and be like, oh, I don't, I have to, I don't own the first game. I have to go buy it, play it all the way through to unlock this like vault with a secret thing. But that's one way to get people to play the first game. I guess so. You know, and. Uh... Another way to say to your uh, your loyal fans how much you appreciate their their business. I guess it's the opposite of Destiny, where it's just like, oh man, no. If, if, talking, if you if you, if you if you own everything already, it does you can't get the stuff. You have to rebuy it all. This was at least like if you own it, you you get this. But if you don't own it, you gotta buy it. <laughs> Destiny is just the worst overall. So I almost um, when I was writing this uh, document up. I think I, at first I had like I had evolved Destiny and something else like three games in a row, and I was like I don't want to talk about these at all, so I just took them off. Bad games. You don't want to talk about bad games. It was. So <laughs> um, I can't believe Destiny is still a thing that people like get excited for. Um. Yeah, I mean that game is awful, and everyone <laughs> complains about it at all times. So I, you're right. Like I never hear like. I read an article once that was like it was kind of defending it, and even in like the article's defense, like even the article that was defending was just like it, it still didn't make me want to play it. He's like, well, you know, there's like this camaraderie that comes over when you're grinding with these guys for like six hours. You know, Steve, in the dark, it gets sweaty. You're just grinding up against you're them. Grinding out with guys <laughs> for six hours. Yeah, actually, you know what? I'm gonna fire up Destiny after this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my kind of game. But they always they the defense, which is a terrible one, is always just the game feels rewarding if you have to spend a certain amount of hours to get the one thing you want. It's which so stupid. Which, which I'll believe as long as it doesn't push past like doing repeated gameplay, like doing the same mission over and over again until mm-hmm. you get this one drop that doesn't really do much because then you can just buy it later probably. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, Destiny sucks. Banjo Kazooie. I like. It's funny though because whenever I hear people talking about Destiny, it's never like, oh, like I played Destiny last night and I had like a great time. It's always like, yeah, oh, I played Destiny last night because I really had nothing else to play. So it's it's really the most interesting thing in the way that it's the one game that no one seems to like or really enjoy, but they can't stop playing it. But it and it won't go away. <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, I just keep hearing about Destiny. Like, I don't want to hear about Destiny anymore. That game was so... It was so disappointing is what it was. Wasn't it? It was. Like, like based on... Like, we Based had, on what we... Yeah, yeah. Like, what what they were selling was this giant MMO, huge worlds, exploring planets, deep, rich sci-fi story with all this leveling and player... Uh, Grouping and stuff, and then you you got well, like we got like we got four a levels. pile of horse shit is what we got. <laughs> you got like four levels, like the worst story in the world. Um, looting just being terrible. It's all completely random. Um, no matter how well you do in anything, but the thing is, we did have fun just playing with friends. But we could we did that in Call of Duty. Once Call of Duty came out, we're like, this is way better. Yeah. It's true. Because it's a fun game and we're still playing with friends. Well, the concept, it was fun. Something yeah. Very few people uh, have, have in Destiny is fun. <sighs> I hate it. <laughs> okay. So that's Banjo-Kazooie and Destiny. The weekly Destiny roundup. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Always a fun, uh, fun thing to bring up, right? And we bring it up like... That's exactly the thing. It's like, we want it to go away, but you can't stop talking about it. It's the elephant in the room, Steve. Speaking of elephants, I don't have a good sub Do you know how many but, points you might get in a game of Scrabble? 
I was just going to say, we have a hot new release this week. Scrabble uh, is coming out. Uh, I think for the I PS4. Know, I don't know how much like you guys know about this game, but uh, it's like a word game. It's it's a game uh, where people like to pretend they're really smart and then brag about a word they played. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a word game. Uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty uh, underground. I'm not sure how many people have heard about it, so... It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty good. It can get really intimate when you play off each other's words, oh, and, yeah, and just make more words. Let me ask you a question. How much are they asking for this? I, I don't even know. I just saw scramble on scramble. I was like, I gotta put this down. It it's better fine. be fifteen. If it's, I'll look it up. If it's anything more, what if it's like forty? Like the oh. Scrabble World Collection Edition or something in all what languages. It, what if it is forty? Don't scare me like that, Neil. Uh, where did I find that? Scrabble. <laughs> I found a review on GameSpot, but it's from like 1999. The Scrabble review. A 5.2? Uh, out of what? 5? It's better than 100%? Dude. <laughs> How could you ever review this? Because, because Neil... Because. It's it's just like the opening the opening lines is Scrabble on the PlayStation appears to be exactly what you expect from Scrabble at your mom's house. It's just Scrabble. How can you review it? It's literally the the reviews the like three paragraphs. For years. Right. But you like Scrabble, like in you like words with friends because we tried playing that and then I just kind of got bored and stopped replying to you. I do. I I play. I still play words with friends. I uh. Did I tell you about the time? Like one of the reasons I stopped is because my friend broke up with this girl, and um, whenever he breaks up with women for whatever reason, since I'm the best friend, they always come to me and like figure out why, like why it happened. But this one, this girl, like I didn't really know her that well, didn't have a number, didn't have weren't Facebook friends or anything like that. But we played words with friends together. Oh, so yeah, that, and she started messaging you through it. Yeah, and she started talking about it. Like, we were just playing a game, and then she just gets, like, really serious about it. I'm like, oh, man, I'm having the most, like, serious conversation. And at the same time, I was just trying to, like, kick her ass at words with friends. And then, I don't know, my friends just dropped out, so I kind of stopped playing it. But it is fun. P- I, I see this one guy at work play it all the time. He's, he's playing that in Clash of Clans all the time, so he knows what he's doing. Sounds like, sounds like he's a really good worker, so... Do you still play Clash of Clans? No, I haven't. I have it on my phone. I just, I haven't. Not since Hearthstone. Like, literally, Hearthstone is just anything else I used to play. It's taken over it. It's because Hearthstone's great. I can't stop, Neil. I don't, I don't foresee myself ever stopping. Dude, you can't stop for long. Like, like I was just, I was telling you earlier, like, I lost, like, ten games in a row. Like, I just could not win. And then I was like, oh, I'm just going to try a new hero. And I won like seven games in a row. And I was like, I'm addicted again. And I got mm-hmm. two, opened two packs. Got 200 coins, opened two packs. Nothing. Nothing I want. Now, and then you're back to the grind now. Yeah. And now I'm now I'm getting more of my quests, getting back up there, trying to, um, waiting for the next tavern brawl. Okay. Which is tomorrow? No, Wednesday. Tomorrow's not Wednesday. I'm really upset. Tomorrow's well, Tuesday. Oh god. Yeah, oh, god. Uh, there's no there's no price on the Scrabble from what I can see. It better be fifteen. So it's free. Essentially it's free. You know you, you know you know like the thing, um people used to always buy board games and now they like make them online. Like yeah. like you know how there's like obviously Cards Against Humanity and there's like the game of things. Like all these games that like did just a um pack of cards but you got to pay like 50 bucks for them i feel like people would just make scrabble now like they just like draw like write the alphabet however many letters it is just cut in little pieces of paper and just like put it on a board because no one wants to buy it anymore i i I can't see anyone making scrabble neil i can because i'm gonna do it have you seen i used to play upwards because i was so bad at scrabble that Upwards was the same thing, except you could play letters on top of other letters. Like, you could stack them upwards, and that's what I would used to play. Was it spelt upwards, like with I, an O? I think it was. And uh, you, and you like, italicize the O, so, like, you know. 
What does it? What I don't? What does italicizing the O do? <laughs> it just it just draws attention to it. They always do that whenever it's like a wordplay. They like they either pull a dash, they bold it, or they italicize like the one part in the word. Yeah, but like, all right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that's what they do. Like an italicized O is like not that easy to see. <laughs> it's like well, if you it's... take an O and you turn it on its side, you have a zero. No, I'm just kidding. I, I thought you were serious. I'm really confused. <laughs> Neil, what the hell is going on? The greatest game of all time is coming out this week. Oh, yeah? What is it? I, I think you're better pronouncing it. Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 3, 5 generation? I, I honestly don't know if it's 5 or just <laughs> V. I could not tell you. It's got to be V. Why would it be called Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 3, 5 generation? <laughs> like... <laughs> Who stacks numbers next to? I mean, I'm not I just gonna... love I love the placement of the semicolon and then just an immediate colon like the next word after, Read. and then no space between birth and three. Oh man, this is a real game coming out. This is not us just plucking at this. This game is coming out for the Vita this week. Um, every the only reason I've seen a review is because the site I write for always has a review of it, and the first paragraph, the first. I think sentence is like, this is the same game as the last game. You know what you're going to get. Because that's what it is. Okay. Fair enough. Which I guess that's why they keep coming out. Because people just keep like to play the same thing. I got to I want to know like the market behind this and like the sales revenue and like everything they're making off this. What if they're making millions? Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that they probably are going to make millions off of this. It's just like it's just like a pervy game. Like all the pervy games come out on Vita. From what I've seen, I don't think so. I think it's. I mean, I think it's as Japanese as there's women in small clothes, but it's nothing. Nice. It's nothing crazy. Like um, the game I played where you had to rip people's clothes off to beat them in battle or whatever. That was. Oh weird. yeah, what was that called? That was funny. It was called Akiba's, like apostrophe s trip. So it's really just a Kiba strip. Ah, uh, ha ha. And it's based off a real place in Japan that's like the most popular. Uh, you know how like Japan is like can have the really nerdy guys that like live in their house. And like it's a it's a culture thing that they have a word for it that I forget what the word is. But it's like people who just watch anime all day. It's like a strip in Japan that's famous for that, for those kinds of people. And that's where the game mm-hmm. takes place. Hmm. Now you know. And the more I know, right? Oh, man. That was... I should have streamed that game. I think it was on a PS3, though. No? Who knows? Either way... I thought, I thought that was a PS4 game. I think it is a PS4 game, because I'm sure I have trophies on it that I don't want people to see. It's probably, like, the first time I stripped a girl. It's just, like, your first strip. Oh, wow. First time you stripped a girl, Neil. Tell me about that. Oh, well, it was a guy. Oh. Ooh. Never mind. <laughs> To be fair, in that game, you do probably undress more men than women, for whatever it's worth. Okay. Just, you know, just throwing it out there. And what do the, what do, what do the women do? It's really cartoon. <laughs> like, it's just like... I was laughing. I'm, I'm, it's just so I'm insane. very amused by this. <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally... It gets weird, though, at one point, because, like... There's, like, special moves. I played it enough to get to, like, the special moves and see what this game really was. Okay. And it's, like... I don't know, Neil. It sounds like you kind of liked it. Oh, man. This game, like... I think it's a really long game, too. Like, I think there's, like, over 50 hours worth of stuff going in that. And then, I I mean, would... of course, since it's a Japanese game, there's a whole romance aspect where you get to, like, romance these different women. Oh, so it's a or dating yeah. sim, like every Japanese game. Yeah, so it's like it's a battle sim, and they're like, "Oh, let's just throw a dating sim in there." I love that. All all Japanese games are dating sims. I mean, that's what Fire Emblem is. Hmm. When you think Fire? about it. Yeah, it's true because you're having kids, and you're, but I like, like Fire Emblem so. Because it's like it's a battle game, but you're kind of like, I want these two people to have a baby, so I have a really better, a cool fighter out of it. Yeah. That's true. It's the most. It's the most shallow and like 
pure scientific breeding there is where you're just like, I just want these people with these two skills to make a better person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I could see that, but I don't know. I don't ruin fire emblem for me. So I'm trying to say (laughs) (laughs) don't ruin. I'm just made it better. No, Neil, you made it much (laughs) worse. So that's it. That's all that's coming out this, this entire week. Yeah, there's random other, you know, PC Steam games, random JRPG indie games. There's These were literally the only games I recognize coming out. Yeah, that's the problem. And it's and it's it's Scrabble, which everyone knows, and a game that I really shouldn't recognize, but sadly I do. Because we love that game here on the podcast. We are huge Hyper Dimension of Tiny Rebirth uh Five, <laughs> generation. Three, three, five generation. Well, I don't even know. What I want like, if we get sponsored, I want it to be them. I want to have to open our podcasts, talking about how we played Hyperdementia last night and how much fun we were having with it. I I wouldn't go that far. Yet. I, I'd be careful with your words. <laughs> you never know what can happen. It's all in the same in the dark. Um. So, let me ask you a question, Neil. Yeah. Would you ever give a game a second chance? I think I would, Steve. So you've been playing Drive Club. I've been playing Drive Club. Okay. So what I just said. (laughs) I'm throwing it. I'm standing right back at you. So what I what I mean by this whole second chance thing. Is that let's face it, a lot of games coming out recently are not doing too well upon release. They're not they're not done. They're basically there's been a lot of unfinished games tossed our way. And people need to stop pre ordering. Cause that's a majority of the reason why it happens. And Okay. So games are unfinished, incomplete, and then you kind of put them away, but with Drive Club, which I was supposed to be a PS4 day one game, right? It's supposed to release with the system? Yes, yeah, so that was supposed to be a launch game. I think on my PS4 box, I think it has Drive Club on it. I'm pretty sure mine does too. <laughs> which is so funny to me. And so, and I finally just played it like basically two years later. And when you think of a game that's taken that long to play, you're just like. I don't care about it, but I absolutely love Drive Club. It's such a well-made game Mm -hmm. on every aspect that I've played and seen that, like, absolutely mind-blown. If it did not have that hiccup at launch, I think it would have gotten, like, nines across the board and would have been, like, a new generation of racer. It's a really good racer. Like, I can't say that enough, that it's, like, it can compete with the best of them out there. It's really, oh man, it's beautiful too. Do you do you play um, in the car in a cockpit view, or are you like yeah, out I, the car? I do the cockpit view. I, I do too. Do. I th- I think like for for games like Need for Speed and whatnot, I usually don't. If it's kind of yeah, an arcade racer, but a game like this, I think you have to be. It's so it's so nice. It rains a little bit too much. Maybe that's just a PlayStation the uh, free version, <laughs> but every single race has rain well you can control the weather in the full release even in the tours no not in the tours i thought okay. you were just single races no you can you can do it in the single you can do it in the free version too but like i only have the india tour or whatever or some of the free ones i guess and literally i like i get it's trying to show the weather which is really cool like the first race you're on like a snowy mountain and yeah. like the sun sets and like it starts blizzarding which is really cool but it's just it's raining every course, and it's a little bit too much, but it looks really cool. Um, I will talk more about that later. But yeah, I would say a game gets a second chance for sure if they really care about it. For example, Evolve is not going to get a second chance. You are not going to put a second season pass out there and expect that to be a second chance. But a game like yeah. um, like Halo Master Chief like clearly did not release well. Did not do well at all. with Because you just couldn't play multiplayer. And that's all anyone cares for. But if they fix the multiplayer. Which I honestly don't know if it's fixed yet or not. I think it is. 
I think I'm people stopped sure. complaining, so I'm going to assume it is. And so now it would be a fun game to play. Which, again, not saying it's okay to release a game that's not finished, but I would be like, okay, this game, I accept that there was a mistake, that they would fix it and they want to get it out there. Uh... I know that they, by the way, that they offered... Which one did they offer as, like, Retribution for Halo? Reach? They offered, like, a free game, right? Yeah, they, like... They they offered Reach, I think. I don't think Reach was included. Or ODST. I forget which one. Yeah, stuff like that's cool. Like, when they go... It's like, hey, look, we messed up. We're sorry. Like, even people were... Uh, before I just make lies, I want to make sure I'm right. But when... Assassin's Creed Unity came out, and that was hot garbage. Um, <laughs> and it still might be. I haven't played it. But now I'm thinking... I'm trying to think. They they kind of gave away some of the games, didn't they? Um, that deal? Ubisoft tends to do that, though, where they'll be like, Hey, look, here's a bundle. Buy, like, two games for 10 bucks, and you'll yeah, get Assassin's yeah. Creed 4 or something like that. Like... Because I, I own a lot of Ubisoft games, so I always notice this, and I'm always like, oh, I kind of wish I could have played that. Or I kind of wish I could take advantage of this deal, but I already got everything. Neil, let me ask you something. Okay. Now, um, we're talking about Halo, the Master Chief Collection. We are. Are you going to buy an Xbox? Am I going to buy an Xbox? No. Let me, let me ask you that same question. Steve, are you going to buy an Xbox? I am potentially thinking about buying an Xbox. Now explain why. Because this is a really... Uh, hold on. Let me preface this. This is Steve Steele. <laughs> uh, um, so on the Microsoft website right now, you can get the Master Chief Collection Edition Xbox One for $350. So it comes with Master Chief Collection. It also comes with Assassin's Creed Unity, which whatever, like, I don't care. I, I never played it, so whatever. You should still play it. Like, yeah, okay. If you get it for free or whatever with a thing, it's worth a playthrough. Well, I'll, I'll see about it. <laughs> so, it comes out, it comes with that. It also comes with another free game of your choice. So, whatever game you find, you know, uh, they have, like, 12 or so available for choice and there's like Sunset Overdrive's in there, Dead Rising, Forza Motor, uh, Foz, like the real Forza and then Forza Horizons. So there's like, you know, some good first party games and another $50 credit which you can use to get a digital game or DLCs or buy like a year of, of Xbox Live. So it's a really good deal. I mean, you're getting the Xbox for face value and you're getting... Two hundred dollars worth of more, actually. Uh, yeah, it's so like so like two hundred and forty dollars <laughs> worth of gaming stuff. So essentially, you're paying a hundred and ten for the Xbox One. So that's yeah, that's pretty insane. If I had any reason, if they had games that I wanted to play, like I'm interested in some of their games, but I don't know if I'm interested enough to. But it might even be like. I don't know. I like. I can't warrant that for myself, just because I know. Like, I don't even want to play Sunset Overdrive that much. I don't want to play Halo. I don't. The only game I really want to play is Tomb Raider, and it's going to come out to the PlayStation eventually. Oh yeah, that's true. You could, but you could play it day one, Neil. I could. I could pre-order it, and then it would be broken. Um, <laughs> should definitely pre-order it. <laughs> the Xbox. It's like we I, we talked about this on the podcast before, and that there was a report that. Since they cut the price to keep up with the PlayStation, because they originally they were selling for five hundred, then I think they cut the Connect out and dropped it to four hundred, and then they had to drop another fifty to compete with the PS4. That they're actually losing money on all these mm-hmm. sell uh, sales. So I'm wondering how this is gonna like help. How long does this deal run? Is it a very short one? I don't know, but like that's a really good deal. It's a, it's a very good deal. It's a matter of, and you have a three sixty, right? So it's not like you don't own, have ever owned an Xbox. It's just a matter of, I don't know. I guess they, they got more games coming out, though, than the PS4 in, in the next quarter, basically, I think. I'm going to hit add to cart. I'm looking at it right now, and I'll tell you what the uh, what the other... Uh, You're going to buy it by the end of this podcast. 
Oh no, man, that's a lot. Three fifty is a lot to drop. Just <sighs> let me see. I'm trying to get to load. All right, so the other games that you can get are Batman, which I have already. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online, Payday Two, Evolve, Advanced Warfare, State of Decay, Destiny, <laughs> Titanfall, Hardline. Dragon Age Inquisition, Forza 5, Game of the Year Edition, uh, Minecraft, FIFA, Sunset Overdrive, and Batman. Do you Batman? Actually, uh, Batman, uh, Lego Batman. Beyond. Oh, okay. Yeah, two Batmans. I was double up on your Batmans. Those are actually really good games, too. Like, those are really popular titles. I know. That's the uh. thing. I don't know what I would get if I were to do it, though. Like, the biggest bang for your buck would be one of the $60 games. You could get them and sell them. I think they're I, they're probably digital. That makes way more sense. They used to scratch the barcode off on them. Now they're just, now they're just digital. Yeah, they're probably just digital. If I had to guess, they'll just send you a code. Yeah. Um, I don't, that's on you, man. Getting an Xbox, that's... Uh... They don't have all three consoles. Well, why? But you don't need an Xbox. (laughs) It's just like... There are some games I want to play. I guess that's true. Like, what, Forza and... I would play Forza because I love racing games. And that's like the top of the line one. I would play Sunset because I love Insomniac. Right. Um, I'd be interested in playing the Dead Rising that came out in the Xbox One. I thought those were pretty fun when I played them when they came over. Uh, State of Decay is interesting, you know, stuff like that. But like, it, there, uh, I mean, I've actually never played a Halo game, so like, I'd be interested in running through the Master Chief Collection. You know what I mean? Just now, to, like, it would be cool just to like, actually play actually, the story. I'm, I've actually like, I say like, I can never play. It. Obviously, I've played a Halo game, like multiplayer. Yeah, and but you haven't actually owned I've one never, and sat through the story. Never owned one and played through the story, and you know, got an understanding of why everyone loves them so much. Um, and they they really did upgrade the graphics. I was watching a Let's Play of yeah. it where two people were playing together, and one was playing on the old one, old graphics, and one was playing on the new one. And like, there the, is really a huge difference where it doesn't seem like. A, what original Xbox was it? An original Xbox game? Yes. Oh wow! Not the Xbox One, the or Xbox original. Yes, the Xbox <laughs> original, not the X Bone. <laughs> so dumb. Uh, yeah. Speaking of, hey, wait a second! I think that these are actually disc-based games because they're telling me to ship it. Oh, look at that! Wow. So yeah, get them and sell them. Though they might scratch the barcode. But you can still you can still sell it online. I wonder if there's a promo code I could use too. <laughs> what if, man? Just get the most you can out of this deal. Do you think there's a promo code out there for the Microsoft Store? There could be. Microsoft Store. This is all live. We're doing this yeah. live. I usually before I buy anything online, I just type in a code, and half the time something will pop up. Be like, oh yeah, if it's a Saturday, use this, and you'll get five percent off or something like that. But while you're doing that, I'll move on. Talk about the next thing we got here. Which is Batman. So Steve, Batman. We'll say we'll save you trying to defend the horrible Batmobile for later. Because I still don't agree, even though I haven't played this game yet. But if you did not know, which I'm sure you did, is on the PC version of Batman, it's apparently a horrible mess, worse than the Assassin's Creed Unity. It's just frame rate. All these things are terrible. It's almost unplayable. And for the first time ever, a big AAA title has pulled their game from Steam so people can't buy it. Sounds good. And so people are like, oh, that's like really smart of them. They're like, you know, just they want to fix the game. They don't want other people to see it. And someone was just like, it's because Steam refund just started and everybody got their money back. And yeah. they, just, they just lost all their money. And it's the first time a game has done that because people took advantage. Like, all right, this game sucks. I'm not doing it. Again, do not pre-order your games. Never. Because this is what happens. They go, 
we have all these sales, whatever, we made it, we're just going to push out hot garbage. And then as Steam shows, if you give them, if like, no, no, I want my money back, they will fix it and they will stop it. Like, all right, we have to fix this before we lose money. And so that's why I want to say, as we've already been talking about, too many games shipping, do you think this has become like people are now, developers and publishers are now worried? It's like this has been a thing that has been in the news for over a year now, that games have keep coming out too soon. Mm-hmm. And that do you think games are now... Well, like, I want to say they don't want to do it because obviously they don't want to do it, but they're more aware that there's going to be a bigger backlash because people are losing their patience when it comes to stuff like this. Of course. Um, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's, I think we've gotten to the breaking point. You know what I mean? You you think we're kind of there, like after? Yeah, I think that you know, with Unity and now with this Batman, the PC port just being uh, garbage. I mean, it runs beautifully on consoles. There's no complaints there, unlike Unity, which is broken across the board. But yeah. I think, I think we're we're at the point where you know, people are gonna have to like what you're saying. Most of the podcast stop pre-ordering shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's almost it's literally a direct correlation to that. Where, it's like they know they have your money already. Yep, and <laughs> it's it's so dumb. And that's um, and I didn't know this either. But I guess in other countries, pre-ordering means different things. And then there's like there's putting money down, and then there's pre-ordering. And pre-ordering in some countries, there might be putting money down. Is one is you literally buy the game and you give them your money, and that's it. And then they just ship it to you when it's out. So it's not like, you know, you can cancel pre-orders. You can put like $5 down and take it back if it's yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. Like, and then they get, it's, but games in, in the other way, they're getting even crazy with the pre-orders. The Pit Boy is a good example of that where it's not just like, oh, hey, you're going to get this extra 20 minute mission in this game. It's going to be like, no, look, you're going to get this physical thing you can wear on your arm that will mm-hmm. work. So at least it's like, it's something you can really use. I don't know. People love the collector's edition stuff. But, and then th- remember Call of Duty came out a whole day early if you yeah. pre ordered it? They're yeah, like, this, hey, look, give us your money this. and we'll give you this early. Day Zero Edition, of course. <laughs> Which I didn't pre order it. I just, a lot of the limited editions I have aren't pre orders. I just go on day one and buy it and they just give me that copy. Mm-hmm. So again, you don't even have to pre order a game. Because you can still get this st- special stuff that comes with it if you just go day one. And That's the, true. And the reason you used to have the pre-orders is because games would sell out. They came on discs and they would sell out and that was it. And you, and you see stuff on Reddit where people are like, I live in a small town. We have one Best Buy and that's it. And he's like, they're good. if they get 10 games, every kid in my town is going to want it. I have to pre-order. It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. that, that makes sense. If you need to register a game so you don't so you get it makes total sense but like where i live like i have a game spot across the street from a target which is down the road from a walmart so you basically know that you're getting it no yeah like no matter what like that's like when i went to get um bloodborne and battlefield hardline at target they're like oh no we're out i'm like okay and i just i went to a different target because that was where the deal was but i just i drove five minutes to another target and got it there. I forgot that you got those at the same time. Yeah, that's what I would. I went to go get Battle for the Hardline, and it was a buy one get half off. So I was like, all right, well, give me Bloodborne. That looks pretty good. So it's kind of like I was going there for Hardline, and Bloodborne was a second purchase, which is a good second purchase. That's true. It is. But that's um, games coming out uh, unfinished. One of the uh, I think it was the publisher, maybe it was the PR guy, someone behind the Battlefront campaign, pretty much said, we will delay this game if it's not ready. They just straight out came out and they were like, there are so many unfinished games. Ours will not be unfinished. If it is, we will delay it. And then they were like, oh, so it's going to be delayed? He goes, no, it's going to it's gonna come out the day that it's we said it was. It's Everything's working fine. He's like, we're almost there right now. And then other people are reading into that like, it's not finished yet. They're just killing all the developers, making them work like 60-hour work weeks with no breaks and stuff like that. You always hear about those uh, terrible crunch times. 
But who knows what's going on behind closed doors. But it's good to see at least someone acknowledging it on the developer side. Like, yeah, we're not going to release a broken game. That's happening way too much lately. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, I just saw that um, Arkham Knight is going to not be out for the PC until, like, early August. Yeah. I mean, and that's the, and that really does bother me when they say that because they – you know that they look at it and they go, we know how long this is going to take to fix. It's going to take until August about. Basically, but, they know they fucked up. Yeah, but it's like, like for example, like The Witcher came out and it had issues. Like There were things that were not working right. And they were like, they, they literally just read the Reddit. They just go on the Reddit every day and see what people's complaints are. They like compile them into a list and then they set like priorities to them. And then they like fixed it week by week. And they're like, all right, we fixed these, we fixed these. Those are people that didn't really know that what was wrong with the game until a mass release mm-hmm. on, on all this stuff. And then they like started working it together and fixing it. This is like, okay, yeah, it's going to take till August. It's like, okay, so you clearly know how long it's going to take to fix. And you must know what was wrong with it to that extent to be able to make that claim. Yeah, like it, so soon. Yeah, and I, I guess maybe if they, I'm giving them a huge benefit of the doubt here. That it somehow released, they had no idea, and then they examined it, and then they were like, "Oh, this is going to take a while, actually." But I can't, like, I thought they test games on the PC. Like when they're building games, they're usually building them on a PC build. And then once they get more towards a finish, then they have like, because you'll you'll see um, if you ever see tours of like developers, they always have three TVs next to each other, and they'll have sticky notes like PS4, Xbox One, PC, and so they're supposed to run it on all three at the same time. That's what I always thought too, but I know that like they originally build it and show it on the PC because it's just that's what it is. And I read yeah. an, I read another thing on Reddit that was really interesting, which I don't know all the tech talk, but when the PS4 was being built, I remember they talked about they were using one of the graphics cards that works really well with PCs, and they're like, "This is going to be so ports to PCs would be much faster." And apparently, mm-hmm. it's just like it's not holding up or something like that, like. Either it was just not true and it didn't get in there or whatever, or PC development just, like, skyrocketed like it always does. Like, whenever the PS4 finally gets out, PC's, like, five years ahead. So it just, it the ports don't work as well anyways. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but I think it's getting a little insane that it keeps happening. Um, it is. I mean, it, it, they gotta get their act together. It's, it's, it's ridiculous at this point. I just, like, and I think it's, people are worried that's what's gonna happen. Like, I'm fine with the games being delayed, like, completely. Like, if there's a game I really, really want to come out, and let's say it was coming out, like, this Friday or something, or next Tuesday or whatever, and they're like, look, sorry, we came up with this game-breaking bug at the last second. We have to push it back, like, two months or whatever. I'd be like, okay, you you made the right call. You you know it's broken. You have to fix it. (laughs) Or you're going to end up like Drive Club, where you're just going to release and be like, look, yeah, you can't play online. It's just not going to work. The free edition is just not going to come out. You just can't do it. It's way worse if that happens. Neil, should I get an Xbox One? <laughs> you, you, I tell you, you're going to buy it by the end of this podcast. I know you. I won't. have two hours. I have two hours to decide because that fifty dollar uh, thing is done at the end of the night. You're gonna. You. I know you well enough to know you're absolutely going to buy this, and you're going to do it before the podcast ends or immediately after. And then I just read on Reddit that, like, literally, like, they, at the end, when they're like, oh, yeah, like, get your two free games, you can just choose any game as your second game, because the website will just take all the money off once you add it to the cart. Really? Yeah, so it's not just the ones they list, so you can get anything you want. You what can a- even pre-order something. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. So yeah. Yeah. I'm you, looking at them and I'm like, Ugh. you're gonna get it. I, you can't resist a deal. It's not so much an Xbox thing. It's just you can't resist a Steve steal. That's a, that's such a steal, Neil. <laughs> um, so I got we'll go through these last two things kind of quickly because it's worth talking about. You know, it's is it? Yeah. So I just want to know. I, this is really just I've. Want to know your answer to Steve. This is not some rehearsed thing that me and Steve like to do. By the way, if you have not realized by now, me and Steve do not go over this in any way before we sit down and talk. Um, So Red Bull has some campaign with Destiny, and if you get a Red Bull, you unlock a mission. This really upsets people. Does it upset you? 
what? <laughs> if um, sorry, I'm just I'm looking at, and like I got two hours to decide and I go right, on. Well, we'll, we'll get we'll Red through Bull. this quick so you can go buy your Xbox. So Red Bull and Destiny have partnered up. Yeah. If you buy a Red Bull, you get like a special. Oh yeah, I saw this. Also, I want to talk to you about what Dying Light did in response. Did you see that? No, I didn't. What did they do? Uh, so like they were making fun of us, and they're like, uh, "If you drink a glass of water, we will release this free DLC." And it's like, take a picture of yourself uh, drinking a glass of water with the hashtag "State of the De- uh, Not State of the K." See, Dying Xbox is on my mind. Yeah. Uh, Dying Dying Light DLC, and if we hit this many hashtags, we'll give out this DLC for free. If we hit out this many hashtags, we'll hit- give out this DLC for free. Uh, so it was just completely making fun of it, and like the little like press release they they released uh, was literally the the same one that Destiny used. They just re- replaced the can with a glass of water. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Oh god, I love so, when companies do that. I think that's running. It ran through the weekend, so I uh, I didn't see how many things they got, but there's some free DLC coming for uh, Dying Light because of that. We gotta play that. That was a, such a fun game. And we just haven't. I'm, I'm kind of waiting for the horde mode to come out. I thought it did it not. I thought it did. Not yet. Okay, yeah, that's. I thought it did. I was like, oh, keep forgetting about it. Okay. Um. It it doesn't bother me though, at all. Like when people partner up, like I get it. I get why it bothers people. But with something, if it's something small like Red Bull, you know, it doesn't bother me. Okay, so the horde mode did come out. <laughs> that's what I thought. I thought it came out a while ago. I thought we just haven't. Later. Like a month and a half ago. Yeah, like I think it was the first DLC like they released. Yeah, and, yeah, I know. That's I just too many games. That was like it rolled right into like Bloodborne and stuff. There was just no chance that it was going to happen. Platoon, man. No, t- like a month and a half ago is whatever. But yeah, I don't like I don't care if it's like if it's I'm going to put the price that if it's under five dollars, whatever the merchandise is, I don't care. If it's something, I, I I don't think anything's gone too crazy. Like I don't know. I think it's kind of. It just Destiny sells out too much, which is why it's bad. But I mean, Call of Duty and Doritos or Mountain Dew or whatever has always been around. It's always been get your twelve pack of Mountain Dew and you get double XP for like twenty four hours. Like things mm-hmm. like that. I guess what bother, I guess what people are upset is that it's an extra mission, and not just like a, like a experience boost. Yeah, which I kind of get because that's like, all right, well, now I have to go out and buy this Red Bull. That's it's it's ridiculous, is what it is. Yeah, it's <sighs> yeah. I don't know. I just it's another way Destiny is the worst it, game they ever. they just sell out too much, like a little bit too much, and they do they do it like they don't have any like taste behind it. Like like think of Call of Duty. We love Call of Duty. It sells out so much. There's headphones. It's got its stuff all over Walmart. It gets like celebrities like demo its games and they put their faces all over everything. They get like the dumbest okay. commercials with like Jonah yeah, Hill in it. Jonah. And like know. they like Call of Duty, like it goes crazy. If you ever sign on to the store and look at the add ons of all the skin packs, there's like a billion skin packs you can get for your gun. You got a duck gun because for whatever reason you wanted it. That was awesome. <laughs> and so like, and it gets away with it because they're almost just like, it's for whatever reason. It's just it's a game that I think um, succeeded. It's a fun. It's a fun game. That's the problem with Destiny. No one likes it in the first place, and then they just keep doing all this other stuff that people don't like in general, and so now they don't like it even more. It's just it's an insidious game, is what it is. Ooh, I like it. All right, so I'm gonna take off that last thing because I really don't care about it, and we got about ten minutes. And we got some games to talk about, mainly you and Batman, so I'll get through mine pretty quickly. Okay. Um, Hearthstone, hate it, love it. It's never going away. Metal Gear Solid, still messing around in it. Um, I'm starting to get excited about it. I keep, I'm like in this, in the phase where I'm watching all the gameplay and, and going to like the really random sites that happen to have like a quick interview or something because they filmed the at like PAX East on their cell phone or something like that. So okay. I'm like I'm like getting hyped about it. I'm still I am worried though. Like I'm I'm like really worried about this game. But people like what are you even, worried about 
My favorite thing about Metal Gear Solid is, like I said, I love story. It would have like two hour long cutscenes. You just set the controller down and there would just be this complex, complicated, crazy story that was really intriguing. And then it had really fun gameplay, but it was very focused. And so it was almost like a puzzle. Like they'd put you, it was never open world. It was always very small levels. Yeah, yeah. I and, understand what you mean. And sections. And so it would be like you'd go into this one room, this one building, and it'd be like, you have to get to the top floor. There are, pe- there are four floors. There are people on each floor. Every time you die, they're going to be in that same spot. So it's almost like a puzzle. Like, how do I get past this? Oh, I failed. Let me do it again or I died. I know now I have to do this. So it's kind of like that. This is more like... That's like how you would go into a Bloodborne. Uh, kind of. Like, it's, it's almost like... Not to say you have to die to, like, understand what you're doing. And if you get caught, you can still, like, fight your way out and stuff. But a lot of times I would do is, like, I would get caught. I go, oh, no, I want to... I feel like I can do this without getting caught. And so it's almost finding that puzzle. But it's very scripted in that way. It's very, like, I know this guy's going to turn around in, like, three seconds and I can sneak by him. That's going to happen every single time I play this game. This seems like they're getting away from that, which is good in that sense that it's not nearly as scripted. It could be. I, I don't know yet from what I've the only the demo I've played and the stuff I've seen. But whenever it goes open world like that, mm-hmm. it's always almost too easy to flaunt. Like when things are scripted, it keeps the action really tense and all the situations really tense. So it's like, oh, you think you're in the clear and then a guy happens to like walk through the door, which is clearly scripted, but it made it tense. Well, if you're in an open world... He might not walk through the door for another three minutes, so you'll never know, and you'll just like walk through this empty room because you're ahead of the game or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm worried it's not going to be as put together as a Metal Gear Solid game usually is. But in the same sense, it's still I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I was like, I'm watching gameplay, and it seems it seems like so much fun getting like the dog to like come with you, and it, it like barks and distracts people. Oh man, it's so cool. You like that, huh? The dog, like the dog, Steve. The dog wears an eye patch. Come on, it's a wolf. Oh. It's a white wolf with an eye patch. That's pretty incredible. It's if insane, I'm like that. Um, what else am I playing? Final Fantasy XIV MMO. Talked about it a lot last week. Still having a lot of fun with it. I'm not gonna lie. Having, getting real nerdy about it. Where I'm now reading like, how to like. They're called, like, rotations every, um, I'm not going to get into it. I don't want to no, sound like, I don't want to sound like you talking about the Skyrim map, but I'm getting down to, like, the nitty gritty. It's called Tamriel, okay? <laughs> I'm getting down to, like, the nitty gritty of, like, getting the extra 10 points of damage out mm-hmm. every five seconds. Like, doing, like, down to that mathematical science that you always hear, like, the MMO people, like, 3.33 repeating, of course, like, all that stuff. I'm not at that level yet, but I'm like, I'm thinking about like, oh, if I did this move before this move, I would save myself like half a second and that like matters in the end or whatever. But I'm mm-hmm. um, interested in the story. It's actually really interesting, which I almost impossible to explain. But the big thing, Steve, is Drive Club, which I was talking a lot about. Um, yes. Handles better than the Batmobile. I, I actually don't know that at all. Um, <laughs> I just got online play today. Like... They released the free version of it, and they were like, we're slowly oh, yeah, going to give people access to multiplayer so it doesn't break the servers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just got I, – I signed on today. Literally, I was like, I was going to buy it, which, by the way, I can't figure out how to buy it. I'm trying to give them I'm trying to give them my money, and they're not taking it. It's so hard to find out. Every time I like go to the store, it's like, oh, no, you have an error. You can't do it. It's like this page is no longer used or whatever. Like Even if I go on my laptop or on the actual PS4, it just – it does not do it. I cannot find it. All I'm finding are more add-ons for, like, cars or whatnot. That's really weird. It's so weird. I'm like, I'm just trying to give you my money, and I can't do it. But now but now that I have multiplayer, I'm going to hold off for a little bit just because I want to play more of that, which I'm having a lot of fun. Have you played a lot of multiplayer on it? I imagine you have. Yeah, I have. It's pretty fun. Some people are pretty good, though. Yeah, I mean, and it, it kind of, like, I've played other races online. So, for example, my first race... I happened to just be in the back and and the start. And so I was just going and it was fine. And one guy in front of me just wipes out in front, like on a turn. And I just like could not avoid him slamming to him. So I come to a stop and then we both like we step to the track and then we go. And it's just me and him. And then eventually he just leaves. So it's just me back there and everybody else is like halfway up the track. 
there's not need for speed so there's no rubber banding or anything like that yeah and so i was like all right this kind of sucks like i didn't even mess up the other guy messed up and now i'm like out of the race for the whole race and then so that i mean but that's just that's how multiplayer races are and but then there are other times like you're fighting for like the top three positions and you like are just going back and forth with these other two people and yeah. you're ahead of the pack like that's really fun you're on your game um People are kind of do a little bit too much bumper cars. I thought they'd be a little more civil about it. No, no, they do. They kind of just kind of push God. you off. Which is really no. Because I was like, I don't know, I was starting to pass this guy. And I was like, I thought he might nudge me a bit. But he just like ran me straight into the wall. And I was just like, I try not to touch people. I don't know. I feel like it's kind of fun. It's uh, common courtesy. It just seems fun to be like, if you take a corner without hitting the guy into the guardrail. Yeah. You feel badass. You feel cool. You're like, all right, yeah, I, I can literally be better at this game. I've right. showed, yeah, I've showed how good I am. Yeah. Which are, people are saying they just need to add vehicle damage because there isn't any. So you can just smash all the cars you want. And they're saying if you smash a car, only you should get the damage. And then people will like, re- be really careful about it. Like they take away points, but it, no one really cares. It doesn't do enough. So I don't know. It's a lot of fun. I want to, we got to play it at some point. Because I think I think it would be really fun if we were playing that. I, I guess um, if we were to form a club and play in a lobby, there's a chance we won't be on the same team. Yeah. Which is kind of weird, but whatever. It's just yeah, I don't know. It's like they, it has the game definitely has kinks. Again, it's been a long don't, time. Don't we all have kinks? Hey. <laughs> but it's such it's such a well made fun racer. Like it's so. Like, just the way, like, on the starting line, the car, like, shakes before it goes. And, like, the sound of the when you're going over dirt and, like, all the little things like that that more and more racers are having. But Drive Club just does it so well. It's the little things. I understand. Uh, that's it for me. I am um got really nothing. I really just want to hear about Batman. Like, because I've read some things, but I really – I know you love the Batman series. I want you – to try to convince me of why this is the one I should play. Oh man, uh, I is, think that. <laughs> let me, before I go into that, what didn't you like about the other ones? You're really not going to convince me to play this, but what I would to get me to play this game, what does it have to have? I don't um. Does it? All right. Let me. Besides the Batmobile, does it do anything? a lot better than the other games? Like, is there anything like, oh, this really bothered me in the other game and it's so much better in this one? Yeah, like, city transversal in general. Like just like, getting just around. getting around is a lot getting faster. Around, use, using your, um, your grapple gun. You know, when you, you can, like, uh, shoot it and then you can, uh, like, launch yourself off the tops of buildings so you can kind of, like, get from point A to point B without ever touching the ground a lot easier. Like, they had some of that in Arkham City, but it wasn't great. Um, and it's pretty well uh, pretty well fleshed out in this one. So it's pretty fun to, uh, to, to constantly be flying around and swooping around with your, with your cape or whatever. So uh, that and that that regard it, it did it a lot better uh there's some new combat stuff which is pretty pretty well implemented and pretty fun uh, neat, um are there new skill i gotta imagine there's new skills i felt like in the old games because i did play i didn't play the first one played the second and then origins which was bad but i felt like the skills were always the same like oh you get like the little bomb the blow through walls and you can get like three of them and then you level up again and uh, you stronger need gadget you need gadgets yeah gadgets, gadgets that's what i mean <laughs> Yeah, there's some new gadgets. There's like a, a hacked device. There's a a jammer, uh, and then like the whole the Batmobile brings a whole set of gadgets with it as well. So it's pretty. Uh, Does you, do you that- still have to do that thing where when you have to break a password, you have to spin your two thumbs? Where you have to break a password to oh, decode yeah, to, something. Yeah, but you only really like I've I'm probably through forty percent of the story and I've only used that like once or twice. Okay, I feel like they use that a lot. Yeah, it's not. It's not. They, they have. uh, So far, the I'd say that the variety through the story has been a lot more, um, like a lot more apparent than in the other games. Which is why, like, I'm surprised people 
like this is why I'm a little surprised that everyone's complaining about. Well, not everyone. I've I've actually seen some people that are fine with the Batmobile. Is that it breaks up the you know the constant just beating down people. Where like you know every mission doesn't start to meld together in your mind because like you know like at some point you'll have to use the Batmobile in a unique way to uh, to like to solve a puzzle or something. So it's not just doing like the old ones where you're like beating people up, then like you move on to the next, and it's like oh do your Batman detective to solve the puzzle, then move on and beat people up. There's more. Um, more variety in what you can do so like you might for example be working inside the building and then you switch over to the remote controlled batmobile in the adjacent parking garage and you're like working your way up the parking garage while you're working way up the building and the whole point is that you need to get them on this you need to get up to the same level you have to fight your way up to the top level which is aligned at the parking garage so that you can fly the car through the window in order to use one of the gadgets to power up the generator to get the sprinkler system on to put out a fire. So like there's like a lot right. of cool stuff like that. Um and I like also the Batmobile in general. No like no one's complaining about how fun it is to just drive around in it. They don't like the tank battles that come as a a part of it. I'm fine with the tank battles. I think they're I actually think they're fun, but that's also I was I love like twisted metal. I like car combat. I oh, think that's okay. a fun thing. So like that's why I'm okay with it. It's really fun to dive off of a building and like hit the button and then like land in the car and like start driving like wherever you need to go. That's really cool. Um, it's also really cool that if like you're driving, you can just, just like pop out of the car and it ejects you. And either you can just glide and because you're going so fast, you literally can glide forever and then like land wherever you need to go. Or, like, you can dive out of the car and, like, attack someone, which is pretty fun. And then also, if you're fighting people and your car is in the vicinity of you, you can, like, volley people into the air and, like, hit a button and your car will shoot the bullet to incapacitate them out of the air. So that's pretty fun. So, like, so you can do, like, volleys or, like, you're, like, doing combat and, then like, if you do the launch volley, which is X square. Uh, which will put them in the air, and then you hit L1 when they're popped in the air, and like the because the, obviously Batman doesn't kill anyone. Yeah, of the, course. The little shock, bullet, the shock bullet comes out and it shocks them, and then they're done. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, see that. It, that... So I go on, go on. It's it's fun, and then like you know the combat is the Batman combat that they came up with, and it's just re- refined to a very fine, very enjoyable. Uh, like just perfection like they've they've pretty much taken that system as far as they could take it so okay yeah see um every complaint i see about the batmobile too is is one it's it's forcing people to do it which in one regard i get why people don't like that but you made a good point that it fixes the pacing because i do agree with the other batmans you like you beat a bunch of people up you get some piece of information to go oh i gotta go over here you drift over that building all right, let's find a way into the store. Let me sneak around and beat these people up. Let me get in the store. All right, now there's a group of 10 guys I have to fight to get past them. Okay, now new piece of information. Oh, there's a hostage. Let me sneak around. And like, So I get that. And if they were doing that and now they're like, okay, now hop in this car and fight in the tank for like a couple minutes, it would just completely break that down for a second. It does. And then it would, it and then it would like rebuild. It would be like, okay, now I can get back out and fight people if you want. Like that. So I get the pacing aspect of that. I understand why people get mad because – they that's the, what they like in a game but i don't think it's the end of the world like the way people are talking about the batmobile they're making it seem like it's ruining the game and i just can't see that at all i feel like it's just like at most an inconvenience at some moments of the game but as you were yeah. saying if you use it in like the free mode and just like exploring the world it's up to you how much fun it's you want awesome. to have with it it's awesome for driving around the city like you do like it's got like this really cool power slide that you can do, which is just like it's fun to pull off the power slide, and like it goes so fast, and like you'll just be driving around, be like, oh shit, there's something going on over there, and you just pop out of it and glide over and like get into the fight, and then call it, and it will drive up behind you, and you hop in the air, and you land in the cockpit, and you drive away. You feel like a badass. I feel like it's. I mean, I have to play it myself to really get the feeling of it, but I feel like it's a good addition in, into. Since that, this is supposed to be the final one, I believe. I think that's yes. the rumors. 
Well, as um, far as as far as I've been led, to, I've been I've avoided all spoilers in this mm-hmm. game. As far as I've been led to believe in the story, Batman's dying in this game. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, that would probably mean it's the last one. So. But you never know in the comic books when there's a new Batman or whatever. But yeah, so like it seems like they really want to up it and like besides revamping everything it's like hey let's give them the batmobile that's like the most sta- staple thing in the batman universe yep. and um the only i it's interesting you said the combat's been more refined because we this is the argument we always get in is that i didn't i'm not it's not that i don't like the combat i like what they do with it i just always would get frustrated with it because i felt like it wasn't keeping up with what i was trying to do a lot which sounds really pretentious in a way because it's supposed to be this really fast paced action but I always would end up like attacking the wrong people and I would see an attack coming and I want to counter it but Batman's currently like doing like a flip kick or something now see they've like what they've done in this one which I've noticed a lot is like you know like you'll be doing like the flip kick or whatever it'll or like you have two people attacking you at once they have added all animations in there to avoid that you like hit the button but you're caught in an animation they have animation cancels. So, like, if you're in a flip kick and you hit counter, instead of going through with the kick, he'll probably, like, do a handstand and then kick the guy you countered in the face instead. So there's okay. all that stuff. I haven't... I used to have that same problem, too. It's annoying because, like, you hit the button inputs and then you'll be like, oh, well, like, now it's just, like, doing what I pressed a little while ago. Yeah, yeah. That latency but, um, to it. Yeah, late, which annoys you. But now, like, it kind of just, like, is a system now where it just, like, cancels. Okay. Uh, what you're doing, like in like in a fighting game, almost you can do button cancels. It cancels what you're doing and like smoothly puts it into another thing because that's actually really important with the new uh, enemy types that they've put in there. There's like some chargers that uh, get like red uh, things above their head instead of blue, and you have to you have to do quick cancels in order to take them out. So it's like part of the fighting system. Okay, I like that. See that that was honestly like one of my main issues is that. I would be getting in a group of, like, a huge battle because they always do that with, like, try to get over, like, 100 combo or whatever is, like, a trophy usually or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd be doing it and then, like, I'd see some guy and i hit triangle but I was in the middle of, like, leaping across the room to punch some other guy in the face or something and i get, like, shot in the back. Like, it always was, like, a lot – I'm not saying, like, I never messed up myself. Like, there was a lot of – No, no, no. There was a lot of human error to it, of course. But there was definitely – there was enough times where I would be, like – I didn't mess up, but the game that I was not responsive enough for a fast-paced action fighting brawler kind of game that it is. The uh, another thing they had, which is nice, is in the old games you would be fucked if two people would want, need to be countered at once because one of them would hit you as you countered. But now, like, if two guys need to be countered at once, if you double tap the button, he'll like take them and smash their heads together so that you take both of them out at once. I I uh, think they did that in Origins. They might, have, yeah. Maybe they. I didn't play Origins because yeah, because I think because that sounds familiar, or maybe I'm thinking honestly like Shadows of Mordor, which is more or less the same system. Um, yeah, because I know they had it in that, but yeah, yeah like that makes so much more sense because that was the other thing. Like, I would I would be countering some guy and then I just get like punched in the back and like okay, well no no you can do dual counters which is nice and that uh, I know you watched the video that dual play is really cool like on the missions that you have like night wing robin or Catwoman with you it, it's really awesome like you'll be like doing a counter and like once you get your combo to 10 you hit l1 and you like kick them in the air and like let's say you're Catwoman, you're with Catwoman. Catwoman comes and like knocks them out and then you just continue the fight as Catwoman until you need to combo again then you go back to batman so so, so it's like, almost like a street fighter kind of game where like when you call the person yeah, as the combo like, they're just in there until yeah bam it's okay. really cool so like um there's like certain story missions that you play with you know the two together um that you're you're able to do that and uh those are i like i say the highlight as far as the combat missions like the most memorable things like uh on the riddler uh storyline uh you're playing with catwoman on every single quest so like all the Riddler missions have been my favorite so far because the combat is just like so much more fun when especially because Catwoman is like a completely different person because she's so quick that when like after you do the switch and you're fighting as Catwoman you're just like like bouncing off of people like back and forth and it's completely different to how Batman controls because he's kind of like tanky because he's so big so yeah it's, it's fun see that's really I did see those and I was like and that 
they look awesome. Like just the animations that I've seen look like they would just be a lot of fun. Like the the kind that you wouldn't get tired of pulling off and watching. Yeah. Like, yeah. Again, like Shadows of Mordor, like I never got tired of doing those finishing moves on people throughout mm-hmm. the entire game. And like that seems like this would be like I would never get tired of doing these awesome no, no, combos awesome. on people. Like they just look like so much fun. It's just, I mean, I like Batman games because, well, first of all, I love Batman, so I love seeing like how they implement all the villains and stuff. But like, they're just one of the the few game series still that like I'll just play and stuff will happen. And I'll be like, well, that was fucking awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, st- like some of the stuff that happens in the story and like the like the big set piece spectacles are really well done in the series. So like they they're they're cool and a lot of those moments in this one have been the Batmobile involved. So that's why I'm not really too uh, upset by how they make you use it because I think they actually make you use it in interesting ways. Like it's not every time they're like, hey, do a tank battle. Sometimes you're using it to bridge a gap so that you can get a running start. You know what I mean? Like there's one where like the bridge is out. So you have to like drive full speed in the Batmobile and launch yourself out of it so you could glide over the river and land on the other side. Like a little stuff like that is pretty cool. So Yeah, it's it like again the Batmobile, like I get why people probably don't care about it. If you are like just like I wanna play this game because I like the fighting, then yeah, like the, you're probably annoyed about it, but Well yeah, like that's why I like I, I play the Batman games as a ride. Like <laughs> I like the story and I it's just like an action movie ride and like all the cool stuff in there is is fun. And uh also another thing I'd like to, to point out is um the way that they handle the side missions is really good for someone like me in that uh, you get to points where you have to play the main story in order to, because otherwise, like things wouldn't align correctly in like the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you got too far in the story, then like this riddler mission wouldn't make sense. But it's good because like otherwise, I, I in these games I would like binge out on the side quest and then I'd be like kind of burnt out and like rush through the story. So this is like keeping me even on all regards. So like what'll happen is like you in the main story I just met Penguin for example. A uh, small spoiler. I mean, I, I I assume that you would know that Penguin would probably be in this game. Yeah. But uh, now like that opens his side quest line, and that's the only way to open it is by getting to it in the main story. So it's like um, it's kind of well managed in that like they don't just throw everything at you at once. You know what I mean? And like it, it's not like you, you get those uh, Ubisoft like everyone says the first time you open an Assassin's Creed map is the most <laughs> overwhelming thing on earth because like oh, yeah. all those icons pop up. Or like it's, The Witcher when you yeah, first yeah. see that. Yeah, it's like it's like you, you, you don't know what to do first. But I like that this kind of is like well like let us guide you through like the first five hours before all these other things open up. <laughs> then go have a ball until you get to you know a certain point. And then the, really the reason that you have to continue playing the the um, story is like kind of like the old GTA games. There's like different islands you have to unlock uh, as far as the city goes. Like the whole city is not unlocked from the first second. So, yeah, I, it sounds like not to say people aren't happy with it. Clearly, they are. Everyone's loving it a lot. It's just a, it's different, and I think people are you know. I think people are just. It looks. I. It looks incredible. Like the graphics wise it's it's insane and it's it's uh it's always raining in gotham in the game, <laughs> well so. i think it was what it's snowing in the other ones whatever yeah yeah which i always like i like for whatever reason i always kind of like games if they're like a dark game like that whenever it's like a cold wintry yeah snowy night or whatever like batman is like they get the atmosphere for sure oh the atmosphere is great it's just this is all occurring on halloween eve uh, oh it's halloween oh boy yeah halloween eve yeah um and it's rainy and uh you know like this halloween decorations everywhere another reason why i love the game because you know halloween's one halloween of my yeah awesome quest yeah one of my favorite uh favorite uh holidays and everything so um yeah and just the story itself is is pretty good like it's all supposed to take place on one night and you don't know who the arkham knight is and my first guess was wrong so I actually like want to continue to play and find out who the Arkham Knight is. You know, the guy he pretty much comes to Gotham to kill you. So I have let's... been. Um, I am usually interested in the stories. They, I think they move kind of quickly because unlike you, 
I generally don't do that many side quests, so I just go straight through the story. And I remember it being a little... How can I put this? It was kind of my own fault with the pacing because I just literally almost speed run the game. And I'd be like, okay, this is like... I'm going from one major villain to the next major villain. But my, yeah. my favorite parts that... Because the writing is really well done. I would definitely oh, say yeah. that. And the voice acting in this game that is too. incredible too. Um, and when you're going like... Like, you know, there's a typical, like, hostage. Like, I don't know if the Joker's in this game or not. Don't say anything. Like, if the Joker will have someone in the chair or something. did you play Arkham City? Yes. The Joker dies at the end of Arkham City. Uh, Dude, I don't know if he, like, really dies or whatnot. I don't know how these games work if he's, like, it was a dummy or something like that. Well, if you want me to, the first thing you see in Arkham Knight is you flicking on the incinerator and the Joker's body being burnt. So oh, okay. Way so. to not kill people, Batman. <laughs> well, I mean, he, I he died not in his accord. But anyway, yes. But, so, but like, so then I'm still going to use the Joker as an example. Like, usually he'll have someone like tied to a chair and then he'll be like just speaking to them as you're moving in the background. So it's not like a cutscene, like you're playing the game, you're trying to sneak up to him. Those are always the most interesting conversations. Yes. Like, oh, like eavesdropping on those people. Like that's always so interesting. We're like, uh, I love in this game, in these games, like when you're in like a, a villain's hideout, there's always a lot of opportunities to interact with like their things. And like, you'll hear like video record- yes. uh, recordings yeah. and like you get like all the background story. Like there's a lot of that with uh, the Riddler. You hear, um, the uh, or like in Arkham City, for example, when you're playing, you hear the um, the like interrogations of the villains as you're going through the prison. That was really uh, interesting. And then Arkham Knight, you'll get like uh, there's one I don't even know who this uh, uh, villain is. Like this guy turned himself into like a, a gargoyle or whatever. Uh, and like you go through his lab and you like listen to all of his things and like well, how you like learn how things went wrong. And it's like it's interesting. Like you get all that backstory. So the the atmosphere is always top notch in those games. Oh god, it like, is. I'm always like, I'm always kind of hesitant about these games, and I'm never. I don't hate them for sure. Like I I have fun playing them, but I never. Like I'm resisting this game. Like I don't really care if I get it or not or whatever. I don't plan on playing it. I I've already saw it. I think it was Xbox. There was a deal for like forty or forty five dollars. Yeah. Like if it drops down to like thirty, which I bet someday. If it hits 30 at some point in the summer and you have nothing else to play, even if you want to, like, I'm 40% through the main story. If you just want to run through the main story, I would say it would be worth it already. It's, I'm engrossed in the story. I think it is very, very good. I have, no, I mean, you're usually uh, pretty good at, at getting, uh, you know, guessing stories, but I have no idea who the Arkham Knight could be, and I'm pretty well versed in Batman villains, so... Uh, That's cool. Yeah, the one, the one guess I have one guess right now that I'm pretty sure could be correct, but uh, my initial guess was incorrect. So we'll see. I'm okay. Pretty, I, yeah. I'm, see, like talking about it, I'm more interested in it now, and it is like I, when I think about the games coming out. Yeah, it will probably drop sometime. Maybe it will just be like a random Christmas gift. I was, whatever. Who knows? That's that's a while from now, but I'm definitely more interested in it. Um, like I was saying, the atmosphere in these games, I do always really appreciate that and the writing. It's very well done. And the um, voice acting. Vo- yeah, it's like, and isn't, isn't it like Mark Hamill is the Joker? Well, Yeah, he was the Joker. He was the Joker, I guess. And the, the reason why I got confused is I think the Joker's in Origins because clearly it's like a prequel yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So I think that's why I was thinking he was just like, I always forget that's kind of a prequel. That no, game yeah. Was, oh, man, did I ever tell you about like the reason that I really didn't like Origins? Is because like there was this one glitch I hit where I was outside. So like there's always like the kind of the setup where like you're outside, you have to sneak, you have to beat up or sneak past these guards to get inside. Then you like go down a little hallway or whatever, and you fight a room, and then you get past, and then you go down like another. Like that's kind of how the game is made or whatever. I so, saw like I took me like ten minutes to get inside a building, fought a bunch of people, went down these hallways, fought more people in a giant room, and then there was like it was a kind of a mini boss, and I died, and it put me like. That was like an hour worth of gameplay and it put me all the way back like outside to do it all again. Like for whatever reason, like it just didn't save. And I was just like, I don't want to play this. Mm-hmm. And it did it like multiple that, times. If, and, like, if you're not invested in the game, that can definitely happen. Like it's annoying when you just if you if it's like you get through all this stuff 
and then it kicks you all the way back out and it's like do it all again it's not like like there was clearly like I got inside the, there was the screen blackened it saved it opened I did like I did things that like I had to redo and it was very weird I don't know but that was just that game kind of had some issues oh there was also an online mode that was kind of fun actually it was oh, very yeah. I never, very I never weird. played that. There is no online mode in this one. It, it was very tacked on, and it was one of the kinds you go like, in two weeks, no one will play this. But it was kind of fun in that it was basically two teams of four going against each other, and it was just a very generic third-person shooter. But then two people would be Batman and Robin, and uh, they'd just be cool. taking out both people. So you'll just be like, you'll be in a firefight with other people, and then suddenly you'll see like, Batman, Batman will come, swoop and down like, and just run, pick run someone the other up. Way. Yeah, like, and then so a lot of the times, like, you would see it happen. Like, it would be like the cops against the Joker's thugs, I think. And then Batman would like a lot of times because it was like hard to control, and he'd just like fall in the middle of it, and then everyone would just stop and just start shooting him instead because you would get you get like reminds me of that weird uh, first person shooter that Batman, uh, the Gotham City Imposters. Remember that game? No. It was, this is a PS3 game. Uh, it was a first-person shooter, downloadable only. That like it was um, like Joker's thugs versus uh, Batman wannabes, and it was a like a Team Fortress kind of thing. Really, mm-hmm. it was first-person shooter set in the Batman universe. So strange. I played the. It was a free game of the month once in PlayStation Plus. Never even heard of it. Gotham City Imposters. Look it up. But, okay. I think we should wrap this up. I think we should, too. It went on for a long time, that Batman talk. Uh, um, all right. So this has been the 23rd Third. Uh, Qualified Gaming Guys podcast. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, you can see this post every single week on our YouTube channel. If you're listening to it now, please subscribe. If you liked our intro music, please head over to Qualified Gamer Guys at, G- uh, at Gmail. Uh, please head over to soundcloud.com <laughs> slash gearhead edm if you like our opening song uh, that our friend of ours made that and uh, you know he's really good at, at all that kind of music uh, please send us a, a, an email at qualifiedgamerguys at gmail.com we'd love to see them every time we get one we always respond to you and we always include it in the next podcast uh, you can follow us on twitter at twitter.com slash qualifiedggs and you can follow us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash qualifiedgamerguys. Uh, that about covers it for us this week. Have a happy 4th to everyone out there if you're from the United States. Um, we should have done a most patriotic game section. but we'll, uh, free- we'll, we'll do it next week. That's, yeah, we it's, it. it will be like two days after the 4th. Yeah, that's true. We can, we can do it next week. Um, Duke Nukem Forever already won. Anyway. I was going to say, <laughs> how many games how many patriotic games are there out there patriotic let's just any any revolution game that's just fighting the british yeah fuck the british all right uh <laughs> oh man i just want to cut it off right there fuck them and their chug chugs uh <laughs> so this has been it thanks for tuning in guys and uh yeah we'll see you next week